As I suspected, 32 flavors. Doctor Strange is one of my all-time favorite fictional characters. Not just Marvel Comics, not sorcerers, superheroes, but all-time favorite fictional characters. I have probably around, I'd say around 80 to 100 Doctor Strange comic books, somewhere around that mark, a few collected editions, I think one or two. So this has been a very interesting ongoing thing on this whole legal process with rights, money, all that stuff going on with Mark Tobroff, who is, looks to be an attorney, and he's been going up against Marvel Comics and Disney on behalf of Larry Lieber and the estates of Steve Ditko, Don Heck, Gene Cohen, and Don Rico. And it seems like there's this whole process, anything with legal stuff is always paperwork drowning in. And right here is copyright interests, um, of course, per usual. And it seems like there is some stuff that was, you know, brought to the attention of, you know, these companies that was written from Steve Ditko, a letter that was handwritten. And Steve was notoriously known for writing and handwriting, not just through the big typewriter or the internet as everyone does nowadays, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that, but... Steve Ditko did write to fans, so he was actually good about doing that. He liked to be a handwriter type of guy. So we got an interesting piece here about Steve Ditko and Doctor Strange. And it's a can of worms. And I'm going to read you all through this. should take a few minutes. But apparently this is written by Steve Ditko. And yes, this article is from the website. That is not bleeding full is the mainstream version with the C. So, we're going to go over this, and it says, Hi, Tom. I didn't see the Doctor Strange movie. I did read the reviews, and they gave it three stars. Marvel movies are for a world audience, so they try to be careful of casting. For better and worse. Yes, they do. A woman, ancient one, and blacks, etc. are to appeal to a wider potential audience. Ticket buyers. They would have a problem with magical effects, but they should have been overcome that with what kind of effects they do in movies. We can always expect some complaints from China no matter what is done. China always demands everything done, please them first. Yeah, fuck trying to please them. Like, if they happen to like something that we're doing, okay, great. But why is it that we had to revolve around our shit around China? You can take it or leave it is how it should be. Luckily, you know, Spider-Man No Way Home wasn't released in China because, oh, Statue of Liberty, yeah, we can't have the big scene. Yeah, fuck off, China. Especially China, the politicians, government, lawmakers. Not the regular people of China, by the way. You, you, you regular people, you're a nice bunch. We like you. But anyways, let's continue with this article. Doctor Strange has always been a contradiction to Marvel heroes. He began as a five-page filler during the earlier years when they did monster stories and five-page fillers. What? I didn't know how he was handled at the right quit Marvel. With some team-ups with Thor, Doctor Strange should continue to be movie material, even though it contradicts the Marvel Universe. So, I wonder, I would like further context in that. Is it like, like in the same universe, but they don't really collide with the Spider-Mans and Captain Americas of the world? Or is it a separate continuity, reality? I would like some definitely additional information on that because that's an interesting one like the fact that characters like him and thor which does make sense since you know thor lives on asgard and dr strange with his whole sorcerer thing working on a whole other level i can see why they could make that a connection to like the monsters of the world and not the spider-mans even though he does function on 177a bleaker street in new york city which is why i can see dr strange functioning well with the Marvel Universe and he definitely has throughout the years through various limited series, ongoing series, appearances in our comics, uh, team up books New Avengers, he's definitely been a lot more prominent especially with his involvement with the MCU that is very interesting but man I, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a conflicting one because I do like him interacting with the Marvel Universe but I can understand the argument there for him not to be seen that way. There's there's a good argument to be had there. But with the changes with Marvel's heroes. A la a black Iron Man hyphen female. There's nothing that remains as, as if it was for long. It seems to prove to be money making. Are you serious? Yes. Marvel DC movies. Iron Man to be a female. 
The movies are comic book characters have changed them in all ways possible. I do disagree on that one, Mr. Ditko. Um, the Ironheart runs, whether it was under the Tony Stark-led title Invincible Iron Man or Iron Heart, neither were selling well with her name. And to be f fair, it wasn't selling all that much better if the same right before Stark was, you know, taken out of the picture temporarily. So... I don't know where you got your information from, but those Ironheart comic books are easy to find in the dollar bins and at many comic shops that choose to continue to carry those books. You can find them. And he goes on for about this Captain Marvel bit, which I'm going to skip because it's not really relevant to Doctor Strange, but I got some other information that's going to be interesting. When comic book fans became editors, writers, they had no use for the ongoing artists. I don't understand that. And editors, they will not hire anyone over 30. And that's why warping, wiring, um, erping out all of us who have been doing the work, writing art, etc. Yeah, that's mostly true. I mean, when you look at the Graham Nolans of the world, it's like, yeah, you have your John Romita juniors and guys like Dan Slott who are still there, who are obviously over 30. But yes, they have mostly replaced those guys. The Mark Wade's somehow saw DC. They have mostly replaced them with these Writers who don't care about continuity and lore, all that stuff. They So they have mostly been replaced. That's true. Mostly. I haven't followed with what the comic companies have been doing for years. It shows. With the Ironheart information, it shows. But maybe you have some good reason for that. And I can definitely take a few guesses as to why. A couple of fans will occasionally send me what is being done in comics, but have no interest in the industry. I haven't seen any of the superhero movies. Not even like the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Because that was 21, 20, yeah, 21 years ago. Bro, I knew you were a recluse. But were you really that much of a recluse? Not even to see that? Because you were credited, my friend. You were credited. And rightfully so. You deserve that. Now, this is an interesting piece here. And take it with a huge grain of salt. Because this is big. They finally got around to Doctor Strange for a movie. He is my creation. <laughs> and at one point, I took over all stories, writing, art. i seen some pictures of the movie stream. The usual movie treatment of the transition from comic book panel to screen. That is interesting, considering that historically we have seen um, Stan Lee and Steve Ditko both being credited, and rightfully so, for Doctor Strange and, of course, for Spider-Man. And he's never really been known to complain about Spider-Man, at least not that we know of yet, as far as co-creation. But here, strictly, specifically, for Dr. Stephen Strange, we are mentioning that this is his creation. Not co-creation, but his creation. Oh, wow, that's a bombshell and a half. I mean, could it be true? Maybe, because... A lot of people on the surface look at Stanley as he has to be the everything be all end all about Marvel. And he is a good salesman mascot. He is. He's good at the sales pitch. But if people look beyond the surface and look into context for his history. He definitely has had his faults and his issues with his careers. He's had falling outs, in and outs with Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, obviously. And... Even with the recent estate for Kirby, they have been kind of pushing back against some of the stuff with Lee. So, could there be some truth to it? Yeah. How do you prove this? I don't know. Because if that's... It's not something you can just take someone's word for. But if that could be proven, that is a bombshell and a half. Because if he were to be proven to be a solely a Steve Ditko creation, would he be written out of the MCU? I don't know, man. That's a big one. I mean, I don't know, guys. What do you think? Why don't you tell me what you think in the comments of all this? Do you think that this was always a Steve Ditko creation? Or do you somehow think that maybe Ditko isn't lying? I definitely think there is some possibility of this being true. So anyways, why don't you write in the comments what your thoughts are. And we'll see you on the next video. Okay?